It's Gil Alexander. It's Kelly Bidlin. The morning after selection Sunday. This never fails to get me hyped up. Yeah, let's go. Never. Morning after St. Patty's Day, too. I expected this place to be much more destroyed than it is. People are in recovery. Uh, yeah, I, I was here from 12 to 4. It was. I was shocked when I got here at noon yesterday how few people were here at Barcana. By the time 4 o'clock hit, we were basically being shoved uh, out of this room. There were so many people in wow. here. So, yeah, it was a party at the D yesterday. Yeah, shoved out of your out of your show spot. <laughs> yeah, basically. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow! There it is, live. Look at the D. Raucous. Look at that place. I, right I there. expected there to be a couple a couple bodies still hanging around here. No, no bodies that I, that I can see. Here's the here's the thing about March Madness, and I just I don't know if there's a greater American tradition, but it doesn't. It, that's what I'm saying. It's like it's 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 quality proof too. Like even if it's a bad game, it's still kids fighting for their survival in a, in a tournament. Mm -hmm. um, it's just the greatest thing ever. Can't wait uh, for it all to start, of course, Thursday morning. Yes, there are play-in games um, officially called the first four that will take place tomorrow night. We're going to go through it bracket by bracket, uh, region by region with Michael Montesano, the Circa Booby Prize winner for 2020. Uh, a little later on in the show, he was on doing some college hoops with us a couple weeks ago. Really sharp college basketball better. Uh, and then the Megapod is today as well after the show for those who want it on the podcast side. That is Will Hill, Todd Wishnev, and me doing our thing. Um, same deal from a betting standpoint, from a bracket standpoint, who the final four plays are. Remember, that was the show that last year, I had UConn winning it all last year. That was a mere footnote. Todd had UConn mm -hmm. beating San Diego State in the finals. He had Michigan State getting deep. Will had FAU, Florida Atlantic, getting to the Final Four. That was the most ridiculous show ever. Yeah, those were incredible calls. Yeah, Holy and I, I went back and listened to it. It's Todd's conviction on everything was perfect. So we're doing that after the show today. Uh, Ed Feng will join us. A uh, little talk about props that he likes in uh, college hoops as well. We'll even get some hockey from Jay Khan. I just want to say I, I was going to start the show today. We'll do the formula. Oh, yes, the formula. The update of the formula is coming up, I promise. I was going to start the show today, Kelly, by talking about Temple's unbelievable run to March Madness. And, like, if there were any historical comps to it, Temple was a 500-to-1 dog to win their conference tournament. Whew. And it didn't quite get there. Um, UAB had other ideas yesterday. But it was just... I was in on Temple. I, I was in on the story. But then, you know, but then it makes sense, right? If, if you know, if there, there's anything funny going on. Yeah. If you got blew out by UAB before, you got to get blew out by UAB not, again. Not only were they 500 to 1 pre-flop, for those who are like 500 to 1, come on, no, 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 I have the screenshot of it. They're 500 to 1 to win. To win. Um, they also had, of course, the scandal that you're referring to, which is scandal in quotes, which is right. what, we have no idea. what kind of shenanigans were going <laughs> on with Temple in a few games this year. Um, Wouldn't so, they have like five conference wins? Like it was something yeah. ridiculous. They were they were very bad. Twelve and seventeen headed in to uh, to the American uh, Conference tournament. So so that went by the wayside. NC State becomes the longest shot to make it via winning their conference tournament. NC State wins the ACC tournament for the first time since 1987. They do so by winning five games in five days beating Carolina and Duke along the way. The NC State Wolfpack winning more games. In D.C., then the Wizards have won all year there. That's my favorite stat. Five to four. <laughs> I burst out laughing when someone, someone texted me. Was it called that Capital One Arena? Is that what they, they call it? I have that? no idea. That sounds uh, right. <laughs> so that that ends up being the longest shot. I wish it had been Temple because I spent. A, I, I was like researching. What, uh, 19, Capital One. Capital One, yeah. 1997 Fairfield was like this amazing run. Uh, Steve Fezzik chimed in the early, you know, New York Community College team that did have a gambling scandal in the early 50s that sort of played possum and then won the tournament would be the equivalent. Anyway, so what becomes the headline from yesterday's selection Sunday? We'll get into it with Montesano later, but it's essentially that UConn, for being the number one overall, and this is pretty much consensus opinion, not just here, they kind of got skrid a little bit, a little bit of a screwing. If you do it by Ken Palm numbers, just let's take the East region, which UConn is in. They have in their region alone, and I'll do the top 24 Ken Palm because 25th is St. John's, and they didn't make the tournament, so it's a nice sort of cutoff spot. But in their region itself, they got the 21st team at Ken Palm, San Diego State. They got the fourth ranked team at Ken Palm, Auburn. 16th ranked team at Ken Palm, BYU. 10th ranked team at Ken Palm, Illinois. And the fifth ranked team at Ken Palm, Iowa State, all in 
their region. So all of that plugged into, into UConn's region. That's a lot of teams and a lot of highly ranked, what do you got the, what did I just mention? The fourth, fifth, and 10th amongst those teams in there. As opposed to say a Purdue, which is the third overall, number one, out in the Midwest bracket, all they have in their bracket, judged by Ken Palm, again, through the prism of Ken Palm, the 15th ranked team at Ken Palm at Gonzaga, the 22nd, 22nd ranked team at Ken Palm in Kansas, 11th in Creighton and 7th in Tennessee. That's it. One fewer teams, one fewer team of the of the uh, top 24 in Ken Palm and not as highly ranked. So I'm just saying that's the the most I think that's the biggest headline of the uh, of the bracket that came out yesterday, the incongruence of that. Um UConn still remains a short shot to win it all though. Yep. Only 3 teams in single digits, uh single digit odds that is. UConn, Houston, and Purdue, much of that because of their favorable draw. Uh, four to one, five to one, six to one, respectively. And then Arizona is next, and that's already double digits at 12 to one. I can't wait. I, I, I held back a little bit yesterday, Gil. I did make one game bet, but I can't wait to hear the, the, the great guests we're going to have on over the next few days. Oh, yeah. Because I think there's a, I think there's a, long, a long shot or two worth betting. Okay. I really, so I love UConn. I, this Houston and Purdue, Purdue team, I got questions. I got questions. Let's start because, listen, this is the one time of year where it's not all about betting. Most people in this country, as you very well know, tens of millions of people just play brackets. Couldn't care less about a point spread. Let's just start with basic bracket strategy. Can we do that? Shout out to Tom Federico and Jason Lisk, who did about as good a job of anybody over there at Team Rankings. Uh, and Hoop Genius talking about their tenets of, of bracket strategy, and we'll sort of we'll cull it through their through their language as well. Four key tenets, because you know how many combinations of brackets you can make. Oh, I have no idea. Is boop, it in boop, the boop, millions? Boop, 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 billions? Nine point two quintillion. Trillions, quintillions. Goes trillions, quadrillions, Quad quintillions. Quadrillions. I believe that's eighteen zeros, if I'm not mistaken, on quintillion. Nine point two of those. Okay. Understand your scoring system, tenant number one. Yeah. In other words, traditional brackets, right? You've played them before. You hit a first round game, you get two points. You hit a second round game, you get four points. Two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64. So you're incentivized. Who cares so much about the upsets? Yeah. Focus on getting your final four, your final two, and your champion. Just pick right. the winner. Yeah. That's traditional. By the way, it doesn't have to be two, four, six, eight. Sometimes it's one, two, four. Sometimes one, two, four, eight, 16, 32. Sometimes it's not exactly doubled up, but either way, the incentive is to get what's at the end right. Um, that is a, as opposed to players in bracket contests with upset bonuses. Those are the really cool brackets where you are rewarded for upsets. In other words, if you correctly pick, say, a 13 to beat a four in the first round or an 11 to beat the two in a second, let's say, you're given the added points of that upset. So 13 to four is not only the points of hitting that game right, mm -hmm. but you get the extra nine points, 13 minus four. So in those pools, upset minded, upset rewarded pools, the incentive is to get the upsets right. And by the way, the mistake people make is they don't risk enough of those. Yeah. Those just the, go crazy with them. Those are the only ones I ever play in. They're Gil, so great. In AR, yeah, I mean, just basic bracket strategy, completely different, and you need to understand that. So the very first tenet of the four, again, understand your scoring system. The second one is assessment of risk and value. What do uh, Jason and Tom mean by that? Um, you basically want to find teams that are underpicked. We talk about this in the NFL Survivor as well, right? This is the, the game theory on this kind of stuff. ESPN is a great resource for uh, large, you know, large uh, buckets of who's picking what. ESPN probably right. has the best of that. There are, there are other ones. I remember tournamentpools.com used to have this, if I'm not mistaken, back in the day. I don't know if they do it anymore. But ESPN is a great... <laughs> I still use that site. <laughs> a great resource of that. How many people nationally are picking what teams? The object is to be somewhat contrary mm -hmm. to that, but don't go nuts on that either, right? It's a risk to value assessment. I think UConn's the perfect example this year, right? I, I think there are so many people obsessed with UConn that if you're th that a lot of brackets, you have to think, okay, how do I go the other way? Yet, if you really believe in them, it's hard to do that. So understand your scoring system, assess risk and value, 
and buy that, know what people are picking, but don't go like mad with it. Mm. Be selective on how you're doing it. Number three, adjust your strategy for pool size. DFS players will be very familiar with this, which is simply, Kelly, if you're playing against 10 people, mm -hmm. you should probably just go conservative and yeah. beat people by picking the favorites. Yeah, if my pool had 10 people in it, I'd be fine picking UConn. If you got 100 in it, you got to be a little more risky with your pace. If you've got 10,000, you should be picking upsets left and right because you ain't winning that <laughs> right, picking exactly. UConn and Houston in the finals, right? Uh, so adjust the strategy for the pool size. And then number four, the way they put it is avoid the golden rules. How I like to put it is avoid the nonsense. The, by the way, they put golden rules in quotes. Avoid the nonsense that you will hear in mainstream media that we as betters only really view as an amusement. Like the 12 over 5? Best example of them all. 12 over 5. Oh, 12s always beat 5s. There's nothing to that. There's nothing magical because a team ends up in the 12 slot that they end up beating the 5. So don't don't be don't don't go down the wrong path uh, of just the noise of those kinds of things that you will hear in mainstream that have nothing to do with success in your bracket. So again, understand your scoring system, assess risk and value by knowing what people are picking, adjust the strategy for your pool size and avoid these supposed so-called golden rules. Little bracket strategy off the top. The formula's next. We update it. Numbers Game Visa, the Sports Betting Network. A numbers game on v the sports betting network. Get ready to dominate the brackets. Turn your picks into profits this tournament with the upcoming v Pro March Mania betting guide. Inside this guide, you'll find expert strategies, insider tips, and in-depth analysis that'll give you the edge you need to outshine the competition. From underdog upsets to championship predictions, the v Pro betting guide will have brackets from hosts and experts. Get your brackets in, Kelly. Get your picks in. NCAA tournament betting trends, and of course, best bets for every round of the tournament. Don't miss out on this game-changing resource download the vsin pro march mania betting guide on tuesday that's tomorrow at vsin.com slash betting guides that's vsin.com slash betting guides you ever have a little uh cut on your uh, your tongue and your your speech is impaired is that no, ever no you apparently you do though uh, i'm just playing i'm playing hurt <laughs> you're fighting doing. through it playing like scotty scheffler by the way, oh, we're getting to that. With so many bottles to choose from, it's easy to find your favorite, all at the lowest prices for over 30 years. Find what you love and love what you find at Total Wine and More. Drink responsibly. B21. Speaking of Scotty Scheffler, before we get to the championship formula. Well done, Gilberto. I feel bad because, like, the whole time I'm watching, I'm like, do I text Kelly? Like, Hey, man, it always gets awkward when you're in those situations. Yeah. I, I had one of those days yesterday where I just kept thinking to myself, I was like, you know, sometimes sports betting, for as hard as it is, doesn't have to be that hard. <laughs> and yesterday was one of those days where I had Ega, famously, yeah. right? You went country clubbing yesterday. It was, it's total country clubbing. Whatever week. happened to my open with that? I got to figure that Iga out. Ega and Scott, the Sviatek Scheffler Kiniella yep. yesterday, where, in case you missed it, Ega Sviatek wins her, uh, wins her 19th career tournament, her eighth 1,000, which is just ridiculous. Uh, and she does so in straight sets against Maria Sakari. So we hit that as a plus 275 uh, uh, preflop play. Um, so two and two on Ega Futures this year. Doha and Indian Wells to the good. Australian Open in Dubai to the bad. That's a net win even on that. And matches were killing it. So good on everybody who had Ega. Good on everybody who had Carlitos, who also mm -hmm. won on the men's side. Uh, I did not have that. I'll tell you what else I didn't have. Saturday night... I had Scotty Scheffler preflop plus 586. Mm -hmm. Again, we talked about it. it's like really lame -o price, but it's Scheffler, the world number one, just like Giga's the world number one on the women's tennis side. And I'm just like, I'm going to have it in my account. But then Saturday night when he was five strokes back and it was 11 to one, I didn't have the cojones to play to add. I was sure, just like, I, that's just, not long enough for me. To understand, I, th that was, it was Scheffler's flu game, man, on Sunday. Like, that was... Shout out, by the way, for those who missed it, he shot a final round 64 to win tennis's, excuse me, golf's de facto fifth major at the TPC, the tournament, uh, the, the tournament players, players championship. championship. The players championship now is what it's called. He wins it by one stroke, 20 under for the tournament. He wins it by one stroke. Uh, over <laughs> over Brian Harmon, Wyndham Clark, and Xander Shoffley, who Kelly had every which way. Xander Shoffley doing Xander Shoffley things down the, the back stretch there. But Wyndham Clark, Ugh. you ever see those shots in basketball that are halfway down and somehow come up? Incredible. That's what his putt was to force a playoff. 
Uh, he, he, I mean, he had, it was a couple of them uh, for him on that back nine. Yeah. It, it was terrible. And I mean, geez, listen, it's, I, Wyndham Clark is, an, is not a guy. I mean, his his past year, calendar year, has been simply incredible. He's really come onto the scene uh, strong. There's, there's, you know, those post-game sounds sometimes from, you know, whether it's a football game, basketball game, whatever, where you just, you get a whole a whole new vision and, and amount of respect for a guy. That was Wyndham Clark yesterday. He was so pissed off that those putts weren't going down. You could just, you could see it in his eyes, hear it in his voice. He couldn't really even get through it without, you know, he was so angry about that. I'm like, this is the guy teeing, like, teeing it up, going forward. I'm not going to ignore like I have before. And this is what we always said about Scheffler. Like, if the putter was good, God help everybody else. It, it, it was crazy. We, we, did a, we did a long shots after the cut podcast on Friday night. We spent a lot of time talking about Scheffler j- just because – it was Matt was a little bit more pro Scheffler. I was a little bit more anti Scheffler at that time, and I don't want to necessarily say, you know, not that Matt went and bet, bet an outright on him. I don't believe, and not that I was going to bet against him. But at that point on Friday, I mean, he openly talked about how how much pain he was in with his neck. Yeah. Thought about withdrew withdrawing during That's the amazing. round. So you know, Matt kind of brought up a futures bet on. I'm like, you can't consider a futures bet right now. The guy, you don't even know if the guy's gonna be able to make it through yeah. the tournament. I'm like, at the same time, I'm not betting against him. And but then, then Sunday then he just up, goes nuclear. He ends up eagling, eagling. I never mm-hmm. said that very often. Eagling, yeah. E- eagles number four, which is the hole that no one eagles mm-hmm. at uh, TBC Sawgrass. And once that happened, the flood gla- the floodgates seemingly opened. Uh, he did miss a putt on 13 after a great approach where I was like, oh, yeah. well, there may be, maybe the putter's coming back. But that was it. That was the only sort of wobble in any of it. It really was. And then, you know, Wyndham Clark and, and Shoffley, uh, I mean, who had their stumbles, Shoffley, man, it's tough. It, it, it is. I mean, you, he choked. He choked. That's all you can say. For a guy who, for a guy who was as perfect as he was yes. all week, start, started missing fairways on the back nine, missing greens, stuff he wasn't doing he's in all the pine. week. Now he's in the pine. Yeah. It was a disaster. And then – but man, once those guys got to seventeen, both of them—I I mean, they, 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 the it's why it's why they knew they had to. You had to go for and it, right? Did. It's one of the greatest endings in golf for a reason because the whole tournament can be won or lost right there. And both of them, I mean, put it close enough to make birdies. Wyndham Clark makes his, Shoffley, and Shoffley doesn't make his. You go to eighteen. I was, it was wild. It was a beautiful sports day because. Everybody made room time-wise for the next thing. So Iga double parked outside. Mm-hmm. She made sure to get rid of Sakari so that uh, we could watch the Temple game. That didn't work out very well with Temple. Like, so I watched the the Players Championship. They I think two shots shy yeah. of Selection Sunday. <laughs> right, there's only a two shot bleed over. Then it was right into Selection Sunday. So it was perfect how it timed out yesterday. Speaking of which, the update to the tried and true college basketball formula here on the numbers game at Veasan is as such. Again, here are your criteria. Last 33 champs had more assists than turnovers. 31 of the last 33 had a head coach with Sweet 16 experience prior. The only exceptions, 2014 UConn Huskies with Kevin Ollie. That was the Shabazz Napier-led Huskies. 2023, Dan Hurley and the Huskies last year. 27 of the last 28 champs went into the tournament with at least three wins versus teams the top 10% of RPI. That's how long we've been doing it. The only exception, the 2014 UConn Huskies. You'll sense a theme. Last 28 champs had a top 75 strength of schedule. That makes a team like Duke, right, kind of wavering on something like that. 20 of the last 21 champs were in the top 20 in adjusted offensive efficiency at Ken Palm. The only exception, what do you know, the 2014 UConn Huskies and Kevin Ali, they were 39th in adjusted offensive efficiency at Ken Palm. And then 20 of the last 21 champs were in the top 20 in adjusted defensive efficiency at Ken Palm. The only exception to that, the only non-UConn exception in any of this, the 2021 Baylor Bears, who finished 22nd in adjusted defensive efficiency just on the outside. So with this formula, and I get a lot of questions about that, the only thing that can adjust in tournament, the Ken Palm stuff, the adjusted offense, the adjusted defense. After last week of after the last week of college basketball and all the conference tournaments, we have a bit of a change here heading into the big dance itself. Four teams qualify. Four. Those are the Yukon Huskies. Houston, Arizona, and Auburn. 
UConn, Houston, Arizona, and Auburn. UConn, first and 11th in adjusted offense and defense at Ken Palm, respectively. Houston, 17th and second in adjusted offense and defense at Ken Palm. Arizona, 8th and 12th. And Auburn, which has a four seed in this tournament, 10th and 4th adjusted offense and defense at Ken Palm. These are the teams just on the outside looking in. We'll do these in two tiers. There are two teams that are right on the doorstep. There are four others who are a little further out. The two teams that are right on the doorstep, Marquette and Purdue. Marquette is 21st in offense, 19th on D. Purdue, 4th on offense, 21st in D. Talking about the Ken Baum numbers. The four teams that are a little further out and may not be able to adjust themselves in this. Carolina, Tennessee, Creighton, and Duke. Carolina 24th and 6th. Ken Palm, Tennessee 29th and 3rd. Fell all the way to 29th on offense. So Dalton Connect is going to have to Danny Manning in the balls. Creighton 12th and 24th adjusted offensive defense at Ken Palm. And Duke, which did not have John Shire getting to a Sweet 16 prior to this tournament, so they lose on that as well. Duke is kind of... Vagazi on a couple fronts. Mm. Barely get in on strength of schedule. Don't get in on the Sweet 16 thing where there's only been two exceptions. 7th and 26th adjusted offensive defense at Kempom. So, four qualify again heading into the tournament. UConn, Houston, Arizona, and Auburn. And really only Marquette and Purdue on the doorstep. Yeah, and you're talking Auburn 15 to 1, the longest of those four that are in. Marquette 30 to 1, Duke 35 to 1 is what you're looking at odds wise. Yeah, Yukon and Yukon, Houston, and Arizona, first, second, and fourth on the big board in terms of odds to win it all. Purdue, which is right on the doorstep of the formula, actually third in the odds. The team in the odds that is the shortest that has nowhere to be found in this formula. Iowa State at 20 to 1 to win it all, and Kentucky 25 to 1 to win it all. So there you go. Tried and true. And man, the point of this is as such as much mayhem as there is in rounds one and two, picking the actual winner often by using something like this, by using a vehicle like this, actually ain't that hard at all. We'll come back. Ed Fang, College Hoops on the other side. Numbers Game, Visa, the Sports Betting Network. A numbers game on v the sports betting network. Before the tournament tips off, start betting smarter with a v Pro subscription. Sign up on a v Pro annual subscription today and get your first year for only $199 instead of the typical price of $240. Just use promo code ANG. Get v Pro access to everything we do for an entire year. That includes our daily best bets with the leaderboard to see which v expert has the hot hand. Betting splits to show you where the money and bets are moving for every game. Betting systems, premium analysis, and 24-7 video access, plus our March Mania betting guide with best bets for every game and round of the tournament. Remember, though, to use promo code ANG. ANG, folks, like A Numbers Game, the fine program you're listening or watching right now. Get your first year of VEASAN Pro Access for only $199 by using that promo code. Sign up today at VEASAN.com slash subscribe. It's Gil Alexander. It's Kelly Bidlin. We get tweets at Beating the Book. Always appreciate the uh, feedback. Uh, Touchdown Jesus. Interesting to note that three of the four closest to qualify, but on the outside looking in, Creighton, Tennessee, and Duke are on a list of first conference tournament game losers, which has never resulted in a national champion. Interesting layer to add to that as well. Um, this is from Jesse Welch. We did an after-the-cut long shots on Friday night. When the hell did we start this? Man, this pod really needs to be advertised properly because I totally missed that one. It just doesn't get enough advertising. Yeah, Jesse it's was true. the first one. It's okay. We're going to do them after every major going forward. And then Andy Grimshaw, when does the NCAA Megapod drop? Glad you asked. It's your half an hour reminder. Every half hour I'm going to remind people. <laughs> A few uh, hours from now. 90 minutes from now. We're going we're gonna to record it, and then we'll drop it like an album. Drop it like it's hot, Kelly. How, in fact, do you drop the pod afterward, huh, Gil? I, uh, I personally don't drop anything. <laughs> I used to drop them all the time back in the day. I'd edit, then I'd drop it. Now I don't do any of that. <laughs> they drop it for me. I uh, uh, appreciate it. Stephen Jung, shout out. Stephen Jung. Appreciate that, man. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, let me let me read to you uh, let me read to you the Twitter bio for this gentleman. Uh, he's my friend Ed Feng. He's at the power rank 
on uh, Twitter. He says, wrote the book on winning your March Madness pool, Stanford PhD, and almost humble enough not to mention it. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> the great Ed Fang. How you doing, Ed? Courtesy of the progressive guest line. Yep. Courtesy of the progressive guest line, I should say. Sorry about that, Ed. You're good? I'm doing great. Thanks so much for having me. What are you, what are you doing besides the power rank these days? Driving my son to soccer. Okay, that works. That works. Driving my other son to musical rehearsal. All right. They getting along, the two of them? Yeah, for the most part. Okay. For the most part. <laughs> that usually means there's some, I don't know, maybe there's some fights every once in a while. All right, Ed, remind people, because I always like to do this, what did you write your PhD on? On the kinetic theory of uh, liquids and polymers. Got that. some polymers in there. Got that, yeah. Kelly? Kinetic? Yeah, I, I was thinking about going down that path, too, yeah. but I just decided to go uh, another direction. You Kinetic know. theory of liquids and pollen. Well, you just cut the Ph.D. out, so you get straight to the good stuff in sports betting. Right. I just took a little detour, learned maybe a little bit of math that was marginally useful. So we all got to the same place. Point of that is his brain is bigger than all yeah, of ours. Combined. Marginally useful, yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right, Ed, you, you, did cut, you did cut your teeth on uh, your March Madness stuff back in the day. Um Give us give us the basic tenets. What do folks need to know? Right. I mean, I think the 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 main thing that you need to know is that you know your win probability depends on the the size of your pool. Right. The easiest thing to do is to uh, get in a small pool, like ten people. Use my numbers. Just pick the higher rank team in in every single game. You can get this for free at thepowerrank.com. Or actually, if you just search the Power Rank College Basketball, the the college basketball rankings should show up. I even do this for you if you sign up for my free email newsletter. Uh, but then, honestly, the the thing that's really interesting and what got me into thinking about March Madness is how those odds change as your pool gets bigger. So somewhere around 20, 30 people, if you get into a pool bigger than that, uh, it really helps to to think contrarian. It really helps to try to guess what uh, other people are doing in your pool and, and go against them. And um, and that's what I talk about in my book, and that's what I talk about in, on my site. Anything beyond that that we need to know? What's another layer? Or you just want to – yeah. or should we or we send people there to get more on that? How about we do that? Is that yeah, the, that sounds great. Okay, we'll do that as a strategy. Okay, have you filled out your brackets this year yet? Have you done that yet? Uh, I have not. So what I will do is I will get a bracket for my members and for people who buy my stuff. I'm going to do that tomorrow morning, Gil, because I'm waiting on some public data. I'm waiting on to see whether Hunter Dickinson can play with a broken shoulder. No, just dislocated shoulder. Uh, seeing what's going on with Tyler Kolek. So I'll be doing that tomorrow morning. But I already really see a number of really interesting things in this bracket. All right. Gil, when we first met, uh, over a decade ago, there would often be 12s that would be straight favorites over five seeds. And that has really dried up over the past couple of years. Uh, I've, I've, I actually go on a rant every year about how, you know, stop thinking about these, uh, these first round games are not really worth your time. The five has usually been favored. Uh, you know, that's not the case this year. We, we actually have some really interesting games in which uh, in New Mexico, is is actually favored um, in their first round game. I think they might be an 11 seed, but uh, and then and then also Oregon as well. My numbers really like Oregon too. So it's a little bit of a different year. Uh, it's it's a little bit chaotic with just with the seating and, and things like that. So so there are um, there are some differences. Yeah, New Mexico an 11 seed a favorite in their game. That is actually the biggest spread of any of the uh, lower seeds being. Favored over a higher seed, two and a half points. Actually, I think there is a, a three-point spread in one of the ones, but that's a nine-eight. Um, okay, you like some props, uh, some prop markets that you like to bet as well, Ed? Yeah. So the one thing that I've been doing in my newsletter is talking about college basketball props. Um, I personally find the college basketball spread market to be incredibly difficult in February and March. Uh, I, I just don't think there's a ton of value. I think there's a large community of very sharp people that beat these markets into shape. What do you do when that happens? Well, you look for other markets. And I've been uh, looking at the college basketball prop market. Uh, I believe it is beatable. I've had some you know, reasonable success with that in my newsletter. Uh, what I'll do, Gil, is uh, it's, it's a little bit annoying because my newsletter goes out at 10 a.m. on Saturday mornings. And the prop markets aren't really up Friday for me to, to look at stuff. And some Saturdays, they're not up at 
8 a.m. when I'm trying to do this on a Saturday morning either. So that gets pretty challenging. Uh, but for the most part, I've been able to, to find some success. And I really expect this market to kind of burgeon in the tournament. Um, I expect these markets to be up for longer, especially next weekend when, you know, when when we have like the, the Sweet 16 games. I think it's beatable by kind of, you know, and, and a lot of what I'm doing is not model driven. It is looking at markets, seeing how things change and um, fading players that are hot, uh, you know, betting the over on player points in which you feel like this player's usage has gone up during conference play. Um, you know, things like Dalton Connect, you know, his uh, the the Tennessee star is uh, is a pretty interesting player because I, I just I'm, I'm not sure you can make his point total high enough. Uh, he, I, I really think he's good and it's going to be interesting to watch some of those matchups. So, you know, over the past couple of years, I've done a lot of stuff on my side about how to win your pool and I'm going to continue to do that. But this year I've made my focus like let's get more into props. Uh, these are beatable and, you know, you're watching the games anyways. Let's have some fun with some other bets. And uh, that's what I've been doing over the past month. All right, Ed Fang at the Power Rank. And again, where do they go for all this, Ed? Uh, you can go to thepowerrank.com. The easiest way is to sign up for the, the free email newsletter. And you can grab uh, my cheat sheet. That'll make it easy for you to fill out your bracket. And then, um, you know, that, that'll also give you access to my props every Saturday. Um, and then, you know, I'll save a little bit more for paying members. But I think the free place is, uh, is the best place to start. All right, Ed, thank you so much, man. Great seeing you. Great seeing you guys, too. Have a great day. Great Ed Fang, everybody, from the Power Rank. Uh, we were talking earlier at the top of the show about how UConn, for being a number one overall, really got sort of uh, the just raw end of it yeah. in terms of, you know, if we went through the Ken Palm numbers of who's in their region versus, say, juxtaposed against Purdue as the third overall number one and who they have in their region. And, um, again, hasn't affected the odds, and certainly Danny Hurley's not going to uh, be upset by it, but they were, you know, it's, it's interesting. The committee uh, chair was talking about how this was a particularly difficult bracket to make because five bids essentially were stolen um, by, NC, by NC State in the ACC, by Oregon in the Pac-12, uh, New Mexico in the Mountain West, UAB and Duquesne mm -hmm. also thrown into that mix. Um, and so it did create this, you know, the St. John's of the world and the Indiana States of the world, which we, th which we thought might not get in anyway, never had a chance to get in on this. So um, in that respect, I don't know that it makes for a better tournament, but that's just how the system is. By the way, when it uh, breaks down in terms of conferences, Big 12 and SEC both had eight teams in, the Big 10 and Mountain West with six apiece, although the committee didn't really love the Mountain West in terms of seedings. ACC with five, Pac-12 with four, Big East with only three, West Coast Conference and Atlantic 10 both with two. Last four in end up, ended up being Boise State, Colorado, Virginia. Oh, Virginia. Ugh. And Colorado State. Last four out ended up being Oklahoma, Seton Hall, Indiana State, and Pitt. The highest net ranking team of the last four out, the Indiana State Sycamores, 29th in net rating. Highest in terms of Ken Palm, St. John's, 25th. Bummer. A lot of people were looking forward to betting them. Yeah. We'll come back, a little hockey, and then we'll do it bracket by bracket with Michael Montesano next. numbers game on v the sports betting network. There's never been a better time to have skin in the game with DraftKings Sportsbook because right now we have a v exclusive offer for new DraftKings customers. Earn a $5 bonus bet for every $1,000 $1,000 you wager. Let me say that again. Earn a $500 bonus bet for every $1,000 you wager. You can earn up to $2,500 worth of bonus bets in your first three days on DraftKings. Don't wait. Download the app now. Use code ANG when you sign up and earn a $500 bonus bet for every $1,000 you wager now. Good That's deal. incredible. Good I deal right there. Love that we have this promo back. If you have not downloaded DraftKings yet, you're insane. You need to go out there and get this right now. That is a heck of an offer. Great um, job yesterday, huh? Yeah. Oh, my God. They were incredible. So we were I mean, we had live bet Sunday going 12 to 4. We had uh, the bracket special show after us from 4 to 7, I know. I, DraftKings was posting numbers right as, as games were as games were being po uh, posted from you know from the bracket as they were going up on the bracket, 
it was incredible. By the time we, uh, Dustin Penn and I got off air at four o'clock, we had uh, we had gone through every single game side in total. It's awesome. We get tweets at beating the book. New York Mets 16. Listening to your NCAA formula, I found it interesting that every tier had a Big East team, yet they had the fewest teams from the cow from the power conferences in the tourney. That is interesting. Uh, this is from what to do 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 do. Oh, he also adds uh, Kelly was on the path of kinetic studies, but took a hard left and tried field goal kicking. Which is very <laughs> true. <laughs> Lance Schaefer. Uh, no, I'm sorry, not Lance, sorry, Lance. John Balducci, congrats, Gil. You know you've uh, made it when they drop it for you. That's very true. <laughs> That's very true. And uh, trust the glove. Oh, this is good. Indiana State to win the NIT. Oh, I love an NIT market. Let's get those. Indiana State. Yeah, what are they going to be, like, even money? I feel like every better on the planet I don't think they're going to be them. even. I don't think they're going to be even. No, I don't think they'll be that sure. But Indiana I like that you're even considering it. What, what do you think the real price on that will be? Single digits, but it won't be. I mean, it won't be even. Yeah. Okay. Well, you, yeah. They'll be either the short shot or the second short shot. Okay. Because you got the St. Johns of the world in there too, right? So, I don't know. It's gonna be. Yeah, fit. St. Johns will be shorter than yeah. them, right? So it it should be. I mean, that's I also a very bettable market because you have to figure out who's motivated. Like, who's not so angry that they didn't make the big dance that they'll actually try and win this? What coach will get his team motivated? I'm, I'm I'm just thinking here about we could do the uh, Kelly guessing uh, Ke Kelly guessing, guessing NIT, NIT odds lines. <laughs> odds yeah not even lines <laughs> just odds um, yeah that should be fun for you yeah so we, Kelly's next big college football guessing lines uh, evolution all right uh, this gentleman is the co-host of the point of the fantasy hockey show on Sirius XM NHL we always love having him to talk hockey and golf as well. It's Jake Hahn, everybody. You can follow him on Twitter at Jay Hahn. That's H-A-H-N, the number four, courtesy of the Progressive Guest Line. How you doing, Jake? Doing great, guys. Always nice to join you here on a Monday. Licking my wounds a little bit from the Players' uh, Championship. I, I know Kelly had Xander. I was on Wyndham Clark and oh. a huge Brian Herman uh, live ticket. Oh. So a lot of guys missed by one and uh, got Scotty Scheffler yesterday. But just as a golf fan betting aside, it, it was a really fun finish. I, I think anybody that had a ticket really on anybody in the mix, you know, felt like they were live there. And hey, when the best golfer in the world goes out there and shoots eight under, I think sometimes you just got to tip your cap, uh, you know, gets off to the slow start too, right? Pars on the first few holes and you're thinking, okay, maybe Scotty's going to stay out of this one. Let us have a little fun today. Uh, and then he holes out for Eagle and then makes like a 17 footer on the next. And you're like, okay, here we go. Scotty's, uh, Scotty's ready. He's, he's got the putter going and that's just dangerous for the rest of the field. Yeah. He's pretty good at golf. That's my analysis. Pretty, pretty good, good at, at golf. golf. And uh, Jake, and Jake really hit bad. on it there. And we, we didn't really bring it up early. By far the best tournament of the year. Oh. I mean, not even close for a lot of us that were like, man, this whole golf product hasn't been so great so far. That was awesome. Well, for the, for the golf hardos who have watched everything, I almost, I, I lament it for you because for those of us who who love golf and our golf and bet golf. This was really the first one we got locked into big time. And it was, it was spectacular. But here's my one golf question. So with Augusta and the masters coming right after March madness, do you just bet Scotty Scheffler and just forget about it in your account and just have it? That, that honestly, that might just be the move for every tournament he plays right now. If he has actually figured out the putter and it's not like he's, he's putting as the best on tour right now, but all he has to do is gain anything putting. And he probably wins the golf tournament because the ball striking is as good as we've seen in years, really like one, one, some of the best ball striking from any golfer we've seen in a very long time. So he just breaks even putting. He more than likely is going to win the tournament. We know he's comfortable at Augusta. So, I mean, you could easily make that case, at least amongst the favorites, uh, the guys at the top of the board, Scheffler would, would be the only name I would even think about at this point. But I've got my eye on some some long shots. I really like the way that Nick, Nick Taylor's been playing this year. He had a bit of a rough weekend at the players, but his first two rounds were terrific. He's a guy in triple digits I'd, I'd be looking at maybe for placings. I think he's just in some good form. So uh, we can still build a nice Augusta card. But uh, like you said, Gil, it's, it's hard to go against this guy right now. Yeah. I said it about Scheffler when he first ascended. I was like, you probably should have a bet on this guy every week. He's, he's just that good. He's built different. Uh, all right, real quick, hockey. Uh, guys in my building who uh, who park our cars, it's mandatory, by the way, um, they always have amazing sports opinions that I'm always amused by. There's an Arsenal guy who's like the most defeatist Arsenal fan in soccer. Oh, 
And yeah. I have another guy who's like a huge Knights fan, Golden Knights, who's like, oh, we finally won. And then this morning he says to me, here's what's going to happen, Gil. Colorado and Edmonton are going to get to the Western Conference Finals, and they're just going to beat the crap out of each other. Uh, and whoever wins, it's going to win it all. Do you view it that way? I mean, I would love to watch that uh, personally. And they actually face each other two more times. Uh, they hadn't played all year up until this past weekend. And then you get three matchups between Colorado and Edmonton. So maybe it is setting up for a McDavid McKinnon showdown in the conference final. And just like what we talked about with golf fans enjoying the players yesterday, uh, you know, betting aside, I think betting aside a Colorado Edmonton Western conference final for hockey fans would just be popcorn. Like it's, I can't think of a more exciting series than that. So uh, from a fan perspective, it's something I would, I would certainly be rooting for, but there's a lot of quality teams in the Western conference guys. I think we're, a lot of people are asking questions about Winnipeg and Vancouver fairly because they've had great surprising regular seasons but we need to see them do it in the playoffs. So I think fair questions about them. You know, Dallas has shown that they can be a very deep team, but they've also got a tough side of the bracket going up against the Colorado or a Winnipeg. And don't look now, but the Nashville Predators are a team I, I've really got my eye on here, guys. I can't believe I'm saying it. A bit of a longer shot. They're wow. more than likely going to be a wild card team, but they will get one of those one seed teams and they're playing the best hockey of any team in the NHL right now. So can they sustain that for the next month or so before the playoffs and kind of go in with that sort of form? They'll also go in with zero pressure. The Preds are supposed to be rebuilding and they're way ahead of schedule. So uh, look out for Nashville to maybe throw a bit of a wrench into the uh, Western Conference plans this year. I always love the expression, don't look now as well. Don't look now because it causes us. Don't look. So look now. I just looked. Predators 22 to 1 to win the West and 50 to 1 to win it all. Thank you, sir. All right. Any, there are only a couple games in hockey. Any, any plays on either of these? Yeah, it's, it's a bit of a tough card tonight, uh, but a couple of, of close lines, uh, Seattle hosting the Buffalo Sabres. This one's a tough one. It, it feels like Seattle's kind of fizzled out at this point if they had any hopes of, of tracking down a playoff spot. Seems like that's gone. Um, so I don't know what they have really left in the tank. And Buffalo, it's a, it's a long shot for them to make it. They suffered a pretty tough loss over the weekend, now have to fly to the West Coast. But I, I do still like the way that the Sabres are playing. So if I were to play this game, I think it would be a lean towards the Buffalo Sabres. And in the other game, I actually do like the Washington Capitals at plus money here. It's not a team I was really backing at all throughout the course of the season, up until maybe a few weeks ago. Uh, and they just continue to find ways to win and hang around in this playoff race. So it feels like they've got a bit more to play for than Calgary does tonight. They figured something out with some of their younger players in the lineup. So I don't love it, but I will take a, a shot at plus money. Uh, with the Capitals tonight, and it's a, a pretty light night in the NHL. There you go. Jake rocking the red with the Caps tonight. All right. Um, you are Canadian. You are aware that we have this thing called March Madness. Do you participate at all in this? I love March Madness. It, it probably is maybe outside of the Masters and the first round of the Stanley Cup playoffs, I would say my favorite uh, of events on the on the calendar, especially the, go, the opening Jake. weekend. Yes. I, I got to get to Vegas for an opening weekend of March Madness. That's on my bucket list. Uh, it's not going to happen for me this year, but in future years, and I'll, I'll certainly let you guys know when I make that happen, but um, I can't wait. I, I'm fired up. It's not a sport that I bet a lot during the, the regular season anymore, but I'm I'm ready to jump in uh, both feet in the water for this uh, for the March Madness. So if you guys got any plays uh, and uh, the only future ticket I have is actually Colorado State, a 350 to one from from way oh, back. Wow. So I'm hoping they win their win their playing game, and hey, maybe we can maybe the Rams can go on a little bit of, run, of a run for me. All right, well, we're about to have Michael Montesano on. We're going to go bracket by bracket, region by region, <clears throat> and then an hour from now, I'm doing the Megapod where we're doing it, you know, in turbo and with on steroids, if you will. We don't just pick Final Four; we pick our Final Eight because Todd objects to the final four. He wants to, to add a layer. So final like eight for me, UConn to beat BYU in the East. UConn to beat BYU. Arizona to beat Alabama in that bracket, in that region. I haven't decided between Marquette or Kentucky to beat Houston in, this, in, the, uh, in that region. And then in the, in the final one, the Midwest, I got Tennessee beating Purdue. I know. Let the hate wash over me. Tennessee, which, by the way, I don't think there's many people hating on them. Well, there is I because didn't hear Colorado State in there. No, I, I did not say Colorado State. Tennessee upset by a lower-seeded team. Their last five NCAA tourneys with Rick Barnes at the helm. Round of 32, round of 16, round of 64, round of 32, round of 16. Thank you, Jake. <laughs> Appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. Talk next. Levitard next on on DK. We're coming back.